Hey, it's, it's Waylon. Waylon the Welder. I'm coming back at you today. We're going to talk about 2G B groove with a backing using 718. It's going to run about 120 amps. Okay. First weld. Which one? Root weld. Goes in here. It's going to look about like this. You can see that. Okay. It's going to look like that. First one is our root. May want to use a little. A little up and down motion in there. Top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. This will be very small. We want to make sure we tie it in together. You're going to have two fillers. Okay, remember when, um, when, when horizontal, we can only do um, the string groups. Okay, so first one is going to come down here on the bottom. It's going to look about like that. Number two. Number three will be looking something like this. Okay. Two, three, that is our filler. Okay. Number four, five, and six are going to be our cat beads. All we start at the bottom, we're going to need this little shelf here because that'll give us like a little guide to go by when we put our first cat bead on. That'll help us make it straight. And it'll probably cover to about, it'll probably cover all of number two. Okay. Five will look something like this. And then six will probably finish up in there. Okay. Four through six, those are going to be our cat beads. I find that our cat beads are usually a little faster as far as travel speed wise than our fillers. Um, we are using a, approximately a rod and a half for a root. Um, first filler is probably going to be, going to be well, number two here is probably going to be. A solid rod, number three usually takes a solid rod completely, maybe a little more depending on how, depending on how much you put in on number two, and then four, five, and six, just, just not even quite a rod. Your travel speed will be a little bit faster. The only one that we really got to worry about for the cap is number six. If we go too fast, it's going to melt that leading edge of the bevel up there, and if we're going too fast, it doesn't allow the puddle to swell up and fill that fill that board head. So we're gonna have a little bit of underfill and a nice continuous line all the way down. So it's a happy medium between too fast and too slow. Too slow, it's gonna fill it up, but it's gonna start it to sag. The weld's gonna to wanna to stag. Remember gravity is not afraid, it's gonna to wanna to pull those welds down and out. So it'll give it like a, a fat bubbly shape to it and probably cause you to go over your, your eighth of an inch uh, uh, allowable maximum you know, uh, force on your cap, okay? So we got six welds, we got a root, two, three fillers, four, five, six, cap. All right, machine setup is the same way. XM2350 as the others. Make sure it's on stick. If it's over here on TIG or it's on MIG, you got to check. You got to switch it back over to the stick. On our arc control here, we want to be... 40, 50, somewhere around in there, and use our amps knob to control our amps from about 120. So if you can see that, we about 120, 122, somewhere around in there. Okay. They're going to be the same setup as as flat stringers and weaves and overhead. All right. So our first one's going to be our root well. We're going to come in here, nice and slow, and do a little small up and down like that making sure we tie in the top the backing strip and the bottom it's gonna be like this you can see it doesn't have much room in there to move so that's what we're gonna do just a little bit of movement up and down make sure we got a, a little bit of a drag angle it'll be about like this and we want to have our rod maybe a little bit of an uphill angle okay not downhill definitely but more of an uphill almost straight in I'm actually going to weld from the right to the left so it'll look somewhat like this I don't care if you go left to right or right to left just make sure you're going in a horizontal position okay all right here we go first one is our root weld 
from right to left. Start out here on your tab. And you're going to come in. I'm doing just a little so slight up and down motion. Got a little bit of a drag angle, keeping that flag behind me. All right, so we got our root in. Nice and uniform, ties in the bottom and the top here. Relatively flat, uniform. Okay. Our next bead is going to be our first stringer. And I'm actually going to position the rod like this. I'm going to start out on the back and strip. I'm going to come in. I'm going to let it build up. I'm going to aim this rod right at the bottom edge of the toe of my root weld. You need to watch the weld puddle to see what it's doing on the bottom. Where it comes down and touching the bottom bevel here. We don't want it to come out past the bevel. It should not even come out. I like to keep mine about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the bevel all the way down. That's going to create a little shelf that we can put our bead number four on when we go to put our cap. If you melt this, you're going to have a hard time staying straight. We just want to carry it all the way down. All right, so this is going to be second weld, first root. I'm sorry, second weld, first filler. All right, so here's our first filler. It make those on the bottom. All right, I'm coming in now. I'm watching the bottom edge of that puddle. Make sure I'm keeping about an eighth of an inch away from that edge. That's what I like to do. Don't come with practice. It's covering 99% of that root well. It's covering it up. Looking at the back of the well photo. Make sure it's nice and round. Alright, so this is our first filler, bead number two. Come all the way down. See, I left a little ledge here, about an eighth of an inch, so I could put this, uh, when I go to put this cap on, it's not going to give me no problems, okay? There's a restart here. That little boo boo there and there, and uh, when I scratched off it, it arced off everywhere. That's my fault. Uh, we don't really like those. Those, we need to get rid of those. Okay, so bead number three, filler number two is going to come up here at the top. I'm going to Put it along this edge right up here okay you do not want to come out of the bevel if you up here and out of the bevel it's going to mess up your cap you're going to be too high out my rod is going to be about right here just under the edge of the top bevel i'm going to run it all the way down okay All right, here we go. Bead number three. Top pillar. Got it along that top edge. Making sure my well puller don't collapse that top edge of the bevel. All right, so that was so that was well number three. Brought it here along the top edge. Nice and smooth, kind of flat, all the way down. Notice nowhere has it come out of the bevel. You don't want it to come out of the bevel. Okay, it's relatively flat, got a little hump in here. Maybe a little misalignment. I'm going to turn this light off to see if you can see any difference. Yeah, okay. It's a pretty good shadow effect right there. And you can see where I run over that restart on the first filler. Got a little bump to it. I think we should go. I think we're gonna be okay. All right. So my next one, I'm gonna run. No bead number four. I'm gonna run it right on this edge of this bevel. Just gonna rest it right there, all the way down. Hopefully you didn't mess that up on your your first filler. Okay, bead number two, so you got something to go by. So this is bead number four, first one from our cap. 
You want to run it right along this edge. So I'm going to come in up through the edge. I'm just going to take it right on down that edge. So we got our first cap on as bead number four. As you can see, it's nice and flush, nice and flat. Got slow right here. I fell asleep and forgot what I was doing, but I got back right. So we're going to put that second one right here. Right here on this edge, it's going to cover all of bead number three. And we want it to come down halfway. Halfway, we want the edge to come down halfway over well number four. Halfway, so I'm gonna be like this. I'm gonna take my rod, I'm gonna come in just like this. I'm gonna watch the bottom end of my weld puddle to make sure that it's coming down and touching this weld I just did. I don't want it to come all the way down here. So you gotta watch it. If it's not, I need to slow down. Maybe it'll swell up and touch the bottom. If, if it's doing too much, then I need to speed up my travel speed a little bit. This rod on the bottom was an entire electrode. This one in the middle, number number uh, five here, will probably be the same. Okay, A full length electrode. All right, eyeballs, here we go. Bead number five. Second cover pass, coming in. I'm watching the bottom of that well portal, making any kind of adjustment. I see I need to adjust, so I'm going to go a little faster. And now I'm going to start moving. Bead number well portal is actually covering all of number three. You don't, you're not going to see it no more. It's touching the edge of that bevel up there, too. That was bead number five, running right along this top edge of the bevel over number three. It, we let it come down over number four some, okay? We want it to be right down the center of that. And the more you practice these, the smoother they're gonna be. They get smoother and they get smoother. We don't want no valleys in here, okay? If the valley falls below the surface of the plane of the, the coupon, you fail, that's called underfill. Okay, and down here where this spot is, where I fell asleep, it's probably going to be uh, too much reinforcement. As long as it doesn't go above one-eighth of an inch, it will, will still pass, okay? You got to be careful that on your restarts, especially restarts sometimes will make it swell or you have a little divot in there. All right, so last bead, cap number three, well number six, I'm going to run it right along this edge. Notice I'm not down here. I'm going to be right in this edge here. I want to be at the top edge, right at the top edge of my bevel. Then I'm just going to follow it on down. This speed here is going to be your hardest one to do. It's going to take time to get right. Too fast, it's going to leave undercut, underfill along the top edge. Too slow, it's going to swell up and it's going to bubble over the, your, your previous weld. Okay, probably cause you to be too high. So this one's going to take practice. Eyeballs, this is number six, last cap. I'm going to run it down kind of fast. Here we go, eyeballs. I'm coming in, I'm on that top edge. I'm looking to see what the bottom edge of my well puddle is doing. And it's telling me I need to speed up, so that's what I'm going to do. And we're just going to keep it at that top edge. So that was bead number six, final bead. Okay, running along this top edge of the bevel. Looks like it did a good job. No undercut, no underfill. But it looks like I got a little slow in here. And you can tell it started to bubble up on me a little bit. See right in here, it looks like it's a little bit higher. Attention to details, okay? I should have watched my speed a little better. Keep it on out, okay?
Okay, notice it's the same width in the start as it is at the bottom or the end of the weld. Okay, we want to watch that. Mostly pretty uniform. Okay, no undercut. I don't see no underfill. Okay, can you see that a little better? There's no underfill on here. Might be a little touch of, of it right there, but I think that'll be okay. All this is above the plane. I think we're good. So we're going to go ahead and cut that coupon, prepare it the same way as we did have in the past with the others. We're going to reuse this back and strip and reuse these coupons for another um, for another practice. All right, so that's our 2G horizontal position. Got six wells total. Okay, as you can look down there, it's stacked pretty good. It's no hilly spots. Suspect on the bottom right here. But I think it'll be okay. No underfill. Just a small touch of an undercut right here. If you can see it in the camera, there's a little bit right there. I think that's still going to be enough to pass. I have to measure it. Depth check it. Okay. Now I said I want you to do your 2Gs. 2G stringer. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to cut this back and strip off, cut these bevels off so I can reuse them again. So I can the, the practice video. Okay. Make sure you got all your proper PPE on. You're going to just go and set this here. You're going to drag it down by the back and strip. nice clean bevels we can reuse them again on this very same back and strut. What we're going to do is flip them back over take them back over there to your table get your spacing right tack them back in and you got another v-groove you should get two v-grooves out of each coupon after you finish welding and then it goes to scrap